try this one. There. Double check. Good. Good. Now we write that down. They come perfectly clean from Cali's, actually. So I don't know why I do this. That's a crab knocker. <laughs> 75 foot pounds. And 75 foot pounds. This is the rod measure, right? And this is the rod journal. And I have to zero that into there. All right. And number one connecting rod clearance and in between point zero zero two zero and point zero zero two five so you could call it point zero zero two two for the right honing and it has to drop through so it's the right amount you just go by feel ceramic top and it's just an extra nice touch not necessarily needed Have the tools? I don't. Now they don't make a good tool, so you have to struggle with your fingers. That one's in. And that actually went in better than most. Yeah. And then verify that it that you put it together right. Look at this, this is a pretty reasonable for the money connecting rod from Callie's. It's uh, it's not their top of the line. The ultra rod is twice the cost, but this is a nice H-beam rod. This pin is a more sturdy pin. It's an upgrade S718, so it's thicker, sturdier, although it's heavier. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, number five. How about that then, Dar? This Weissco force induction piston is a standard uh, off-the-shelf piston. It's got a nice dish, like a th minus 32 cc dish here. The top ring is down 0 0.300 inches, which keeps it a little bit further out of the, the heat of the combustion. It's a real good ring land. I have a spec. Ah, uh, right there, 0 0.0035. And then I measure, see if nice and tight, that's a four. Look at these, $300 for the total seal rings. Super cost, super high quality. Also stickers. Mm -hmm. So it's not 30 plus, but he'll be up to 30. So we'll do this, 0 0.007 times 0 0.007, both top and second ring. It's gonna be something like a 0 0.030 gap. This is my uh, quick test bore gauge, it's exactly 4.030 inches. It's a quick check for the ring size, but I actually do the final check in the bore, of course. But this helps me to right away to get a nice setting. So there, it's tight and butted together. We come here to my favorite tool, ring gapping tool. Butts up exactly flat. Burrs get slightly taken off. We check in here and we make it nice and even. 30 thou. Still a little too tight, just a hair. So I have to take a little more out, about one more thousandth. And it is just a little snug, that's good. So this is goes over here. Don't let it scratch. Okay. 
Now this one comes up. Just a little bit of oil. Double check its top. And I never, I never use an expander because this is the best way. It keeps them, there, one's done. Some people go like this. <laughs> that doesn't work. You gotta hit it like this. It's gonna be loud. Was it? Cover your ears. Put it to 80. Right there. Got it right now. Everything's okay. No matter where you find yourself, no matter what kind of stuff is going on in your life, underneath it all, everything's actually all right. We'll get it to 45 foot pounds. That's 40, 45. I like to put the grease right there. The threads have grease, but I like to put it here. It's supposed now, to be pretty fast. It is. Now let's hammer it. It's going to be loud. Now these have to be small adjusted also because they're not straight. Where they go in by finger. And this First in the center is because it takes really most all of the torque. The outer ones are sort of just supporting. I found that if you don't even torque these outer ones, you can still get the same bearing clearance. So they're, they're just there for uh, looking pretty. Now we torque the outer ones to 45 foot pounds. And now we check the bearing clearance. All right, now we check the clearance. Here it looks to be 24, 25 thousandths. Yeah, I'll always double check it. Oh, I didn't know you were filming. And that's about 27 thousandths. It is good. Just to feel how it spins in there. Pretty nice. Woo! <laughs> Feels good. The real test is when the caps go on. This crankshaft is a Cali's Dragon Slayer. They don't make them anymore. It's a rare crankshaft. You have to get from Cali's now, you have to get their Magnum. It's an upgrade. Uh, nevertheless, they put in some heavy metal. It's tungsten, or they call it a Mallory metal. It's heavier than lead. It's dense. In this crankshaft, there were three slugs, maybe it was four slugs of Mallory metal. Helps it to be a neutral balance. It's to compensate for the, the rod piston bob weight. Oil this up a little bit. It's a 4030 tapered ring compressor. 
This is number one. I'm checking for to see if the rod will clear. Then take this knocker and knock it in there. And slide her right on up. A little oil for that. A little screw that on. Use my wrench, 7 sixteenths wrench. To put this on. A little noisy, sorry. All right, more tools. I love tools. <laughs> so this is my little crankshaft turning tool. More big crescent wrench. I'm missing it. You'll have to cut. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, that's a mile of clearance there. That's excellent. This rod with the flat shoulder usually never bumps inboard in the cam tunnel. You don't even have to clearance there, but it was clearance just in case. And this is a 3.875 stroke. So with a good set of rods, with the bolts are, they don't stick out too far. They don't protrude because these are Cali's Compstar rods. It really helps for clearance. Now there's enough right there. So I'll check the rest, and if they all clear, good. If they don't, I'll clear them some more. But at any case, all this gets taken apart, and then it'll go and get uh, a full cleaning and a painting and a sharp edges ground off. The actual uh, top dead center here, and guess on where it comes up. Looks like it's gonna come a little under the the deck. This is just by eyeball. That'll get measured later. That's it for that. Designed for forced induction.